What do you think the core problem is in renting? So one of the big problems is that our rental market is quite unprofessional. So most of our landlords tend to be mom and pops. And um, while they are landlords, they're accidental landlords. So we haven't got good uh, security of tenure for people. We haven't got long leasing arrangements. Now in your book and in your studies, you went to Germany, didn't you? Well, you looked at Germany, Selena. What, what did, what, tell me about the German situation. Well, if we look to places like Germany, what we see is that people live there for a much longer time, so they have much longer security of tenure. Mm. And it's, it's in terms of quality, it's just as good as owning a home. Mm. It's also more difficult for people to get kicked out. Mm. Whereas in New Zealand, we've got few rental rights mm. and little security. Mm. So how do, we, how do we get that in New Zealand, shall we, Bill? What, 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 what have we got to do? to get the kind of German situation where it doesn't matter whether you own the building, it's, it's your security of tenure, your ability to be able to stay there. How do we do that? Yeah, and I think what we're talking about is turning a rental into a home rather than just a house. Mm. And a part of it is around regulatory changes. So we want to see better rental regulations in New Zealand. But also I'd like to see a more institutional investors who are there for the business of being landlords and looking after their tenants rather than investors who are there to essentially make a buck out of rising house prices. So who are we talking about here? Where are we going to get this money from? Who are these, invest uh, these institutional investors? Yeah, so there are no easy answers. So in Europe, post-war, they had very strong policies to get institutions like um, insurance companies and financial se se sectors to be more involved. In New Zealand, I would like to see some of our KiwiSaver money, people like New Zealand Superannuation, ACC, some of those big institutional investors becoming stronger players in the New Zealand rental market. How do they do it in Germany? What's the, what's the, what's the situation in Germany? So in Germany, uh, your mum and pop investors would be 60%, but the rest of it is institutional investors. And so they, they have um, things like funds that people can invest in, and which means that it's more professional, it's professionally managed, which means that they're very experienced. If you have an issue, they've looked at it before. Uh, whereas in New Zealand, uh, most, a lot of landlords don't really know what their tenants want. Do you think there's a, where's this institutional money going to come from in New Zealand? I mean, how can we do that model? Yeah, there's no easy way for us to start because we're starting from mainly mom and pop investors. But we can get new money coming in that's institutional from KiwiSaver money, from institutional funds like the New Zealand Super Fund, ACC. This, this, these are things that are slowly starting to happen, but we want to see it being sped up. And I think part of that requires uh, the kind of models they have in Europe where they require certain types of institutions to have money invested in residential real estate. But it's not all institutional lending in Germany, is it? No, so 60% of uh, homes owned in Germany mm. are what you could call amateur investors, mm. so your, your mum and pop investors. Uh, so it means that a, a, a proportion of the rental properties in Germany, they mm. are professionally managed, which means that if a tenant has a problem, uh, they've dealt with it before, it's very simple, um, sometimes we lack that experience in New Zealand. Mm. I think the, the, the point is, even though the only 40% of the rental stock is owned by institutions, that 40% is enough to lift the quality of renting and professionalizes the renting experience for everybody in Germany. And I think that is the positive impact that we want to see. So we don't need to have all of the rental stock in New Zealand being owned by institutions, mm -hmm. but we want to see the influence, the positive influence, the professional influence of institutional investors coming into New Zealand. It seems to me that what you're asking for, though, is a huge mind shift in the psyche of New Zealanders. I mean, you know, people look down on renting a bit. You know, you're supposed to have a place of your own. What, what's, what's your view about that? In New Zealand, renting is a second-rate option. We have very few rental rights and little security. Mm. Uh, the quality is often not as good as owning a home. Uh, and what we really need to do is to make it more on par with home ownership so that people can make a house into a home. 
It's about security of tenure, isn't it? This is the most important thing. What do you think, Shannon Bian? Yeah, I mean, the security of tenure is really important, particularly for families with children, so that connection into school, community, the cost of moving, the disruption to education, these are really big. But that's not everything. It's also about you know, little things, like being able to have a pet can be very important for some people, and the reasons you can be kicked out, and the reasons that you have to give to leave. So the renting has kind of, you know, it's, it's a very amateur market in New Zealand, um, but it has to change. The reason it has to change is in places like Auckland, majority of adults now live in rental properties. So the historical truth, which was about you should own your own home, while that is a nice sentiment, the reality is that the home ownership rate in New Zealand has been falling since 91, and today we have the lowest home ownership rate since 1956. I wonder whether we need to start thinking about housing as infrastructure rather than investment you know maybe do we have to completely change our view about what a house is and what the purpose of a house is and the shelter and tell me talk to me about that Shandra. i want to i mean i think for me the first thing is we are conflating housing with lots of different things in new zealand it's a house it's an investment it's a p little piece of kiwiana it's all of those kinds of things but what i want us to go back to is that fundamental thing that housing is a human right mm -hmm. And we're failing in that in so many ways, whether it's access to housing, to security of tenure, to quality. It's all of those things that matter. And I think we need to think about it from that perspective of this is important social infrastructure, that we need to have access to homes to make sure as a human right for all New Zealanders. Um, in terms of um, what's happening, I guess, is, you know, in when we see things like homelessness, what we're seeing in terms of the quality of housing, particularly state housing, um, and the quality of rental stock. Um, you know, we've got some seriously big issues in New Zealand. Well, let's start with what's happened in the unitary plan. We made the smart decision to grow up, and a little bit out, but grow up, um, to have affordable housing. Who can afford these new houses if your wages um, are so low that you can't gather the, the deposit on these houses. What's the solution here? It's one thing to say build the houses, but who's going to buy them? Who's going to be the owners? Yeah, there, there is no short-term solution. The reality is that where house prices are now, they're very unaffordable. Um, the hope is with the unitary plan, we will build so many houses, we'll go from an undersupply to an oversupply, which would mean that house prices can become more affordable over time. Um, in the meantime, while house prices are doing whatever they're doing, I think what is urgent is to fix the rental market. The reality for most, not most, many people in Auckland is that they are renting and they will rent for a very long time. And I want to make sure that those people have a quality of life that is commensurate to owning. If we go back to my parents' generation, the war mm. generation, mm. Um, it was a socialist government. Uh, that believed that uh, investing in houses was the responsibility of government. It was the responsibility to house the people, and so they became mortgage providers. Mm -hmm. That's not the view today. It's mm -hmm. about being, you know, let's uh, make a marketplace where the private um, enterprises can work. What's your view about the role of government in providing houses for people or making the opportunity for people to live um, in long-term uh, situations? Well, politics, politics today is more democratic. So what needs to happen is that Generation Rent needs to rise up and stand up for issues on security of tenure, on better rights, on better quality, so then they, they can live a better quality of life. Mm. What about you, Shamabir? What do you think the role of government is in all of this? I don't want us to reinvent history. I think for the post-war generation, there was an urgent need and government became very interventionist, and rightly so. Um, and there were many sacrifices that were made. So a huge amount of nation building went on in that period in terms of uh, infrastructure, in terms of housing, and all of those kinds of things. Where we are today, I want to see government being far more interventionist when it comes to housing that's for the poor and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I want to see uh, big increases in emergency housing and state housing. Uh, but I also want to see the government being much more proactive in terms of encouraging housing supply and improving the quality of renting. Um, it is really very much about that idea that housing is a human right mm. and government has to ensure that it is delivering that for every citizen of New Zealand and right now we're failing. I've got two images in my mind at the moment. One is the broken cathedral in Christchurch. Mm. 
and the bombed out cathedral in Berlin. Did we miss an opportunity in Christchurch to, to change the way we think about housing? Yeah, I mean, Christchurch was an opportunity and we chose to more or less do what we have done in the past. Um, so most of the growth in Christchurch has actually not happened in Christchurch, but in the surrounding districts. And that donut effect has been really quite important, um, which is a shame because it was an opportunity for us to experiment and to think about a new form of urbanism in Christchurch. Um, opportunity lost there, but I think we have a big opportunity coming up in Auckland with the unitary plan that allows a lot of that urbanism and density that I want to see us try mm -hmm. as potential solutions for the housing crisis that we face. How are we going to close that gap between what people earn and the amount they have to save to get a deposit? I mean, I'm looking at school teachers. I'm looking at mm. police officers mm. who are earning fifty-four to sixty-four thousand mm. dollars, and in Dunedin they're buying, trying to buy a house at four hundred eighty thousand dollars. If um, if uh, the, the, if if uh, the couple can manage to get into the house, then they have to live on his salary, which and they have to pay five hundred dollars a week for the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that means that the wife's going to have to delay having babies till later. We mm -hmm. we run into all of the problems with having later problems. There's a nest of social issues, isn't it, that arise out of the housing market problem. What are some of them that you think you've been thinking about? So I think housing is kind of one of those symptomatic things of what's happening more broadly. It's about increasing inequality in New Zealand, inequality of wealth, inequality of opportunity. And some of the consequences we see with, um, I guess, unaffordable housing is people are delaying having children or people who manage to buy houses are living in mortgage slavery for all of their working life, quite often getting into retirement with still a mortgage. Um, and for many renters, because it's so unaffordable, that they're reaching retirement without having lived a secure life, kids not having been going to the same school. And it is very much that kind of that um, fraying of the social fabric, mm -hmm. that sense of connection to place, sense of connection to the community that the home does offer. And I think that's really why it's important for us not to think about housing between homeowners versus renters, but as just places where people can make a home and people can make a place. And if we can do that, we can take away some of the stigma and some of the social consequences, the negative consequences of renting that we have in New Zealand at the moment. See, underlining a lot of this is that people have got to share a bit more. They're going to share the nation's wealth a bit more. What about wealth tax? About what are the kind of things we are uh, politically suicide for um, per parties to say, well, we're going to have to share more, we're going to have to... Wh what is your view <clears throat> about uh, about things like wealth tax, capital gains tax, stamp duties? Shouldn't we be doing those? Uh, we should be far more creative when it comes to taxes. The reality is the old model of taxing just incomes and expenditure is not enough, especially given the growing divide in wealth that we're seeing in New Zealand. We need to think about wealth taxes. We have a capital gains tax in disguise, but it's not very strong. I want to see us explore our stamp duty because it does take away a lot of the speculation that we see in our market. Um, but ult ultimately at the bottom of all of this is what are our values as a country? What do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? And without having love and compassion for our collective good, I don't think we can get this stuff through. So what we have to see is some kind of leadership that comes from politicians that says we have to do something that is for the good of New Zealand and we're going to reduce the burden of taxes on workers and we're going to put a bit more burden on the owners of capital. Why should I bother being good? Why should I try to do this? What's the purpose? What's, what's the point? Well, my thinking is if we keep going down this track, what we are creating are two different New Zealands ones that are separated by wealth, by opportunity, and increasingly, if we keep going down this road, we're going to be living in gated communities like in South Africa. That is not an image that I want for New Zealand. You know, New Zealand has a strong, proud tradition of being an inclusive society. It's extraordinarily important for our identity, for the good of our country, and for the stability of our country. Our success stems from that. If we lose that, I think New Zealand will become a fundamentally weaker, less fair and, a, and, and not as good a place to live in in the future. You see, 
I wonder whether my generation created a hell of our own making, you know, because now we have to pay for our kids to get into a house. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Do you know what That's I mean? True. I mean, like, we invented the property ladder. We told you if you didn't get onto it. Now, when, you know, when my parents bought a house, they were offered a home loan. Not a first home loan, but a home loan. You know, the first home loan thing is you go to any bank now, first, get a first home loan. The expectation is you will use your house to gain wealth. Yeah. How are we going to talk people out of this? How do we do this? I think it's very much a, a cultural change and being able to set um, renting as alternative. There's also things we can do around tax to make sure that there's less of a preference for tax. Mm. So for example, if you invest in the share market, uh, you pay tax on your gains. Mm. In New Zealand, we've got a capital gains tax, but it's just weekly um, implemented. Mm. And so making, making it on an even playing field with other investments, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with housing investment. Mm. What we're saying is that we want it to be fair. I think that's fair enough. I think if you say, if you're going to treat your house as an investment, it should be treated like all other investments, mm. shouldn't it? Yes, I mean, exactly that's, right. that seems fair. Yes. <laughs> and I think, you know, what we've got uh, is the preference for housing as an investment, particularly from the financial sector. So the way that banks are regulated now, you can borrow a hell of a lot of money when it comes to buying a house, but you couldn't borrow the same kind of money or as cheaply if it was to buy a business. And so what we've got in New Zealand is a massive misallocation of our money. It's increasingly chasing buying houses from each other but not in terms of building businesses.